So in the previous videos, we've gone through this process of creating this question row component, and it's got this nice little animation now. And it works really well. But one of the challenges with working with React Native is being cognizant of the JavaScript thread. And in that, it's important to note that a lot of the animation that's happening here is actually happening on the JavaScript thread. So if I actually go back to my index.js, and I've got this little function, I'm just calling slow it down, which is just a for loop inside of an interval. It's basically just going to slow the JavaScript thread down a fair amount. We can see an issue that's going to arise. So basically inside of my handle answer function, after we update the state, all I'm gonna do is say, slow it down. I'll save this. And now if I go, and let's actually open up the perf monitor here. So you can see right here, we've got the UI thread, which is at 60 frames per second right now and the JavaScript thread, which is also at 60 frames per second. But if I press one of these answers, you can see our animation didn't work and we our JavaScript thread dropped all the way down to two frames per second. And it may not have been super evident, but if I go ahead and down to my animate answer value and I change this duration to 1500, so 1 1.5 seconds for that full bar to show up, we can see when I press one of these, our animation is just completely jittery and it's not good. It's not a good user experience. And the reality is sometimes our JavaScript thread isn't going to be running at 60 frames per second. And an animation is something where you can really notice that. Often you're not going to notice when the JS thread drops down to 50 frames per second or whatever it may be. But an animation is one instance where you will notice that. So fortunately there is a way for us to alleviate that. It's just gonna take a little bit of work on our part to set up. That little bit of work is basically inside of our animated timing to set use native driver to true. And that's it. Well, not quite. If I save this and we go ahead and press this, you can see that we can't change width using native animation. And basically the limitation with this use native driver is you can't change layout properties with it. So that means you can't change the width, the height, you can't change flex properties but you can change things like opacity and transform properties because it's already been laid out. We're just modifying that a little bit. So what we're gonna do is actually modify our code so that we can use a native animation that allows our animation to be perfect even when the JavaScript thread is blocked or significantly slowed down. So first thing we're going to do, what we wrote here, this percentage row width, what we brought to the previous video. If you wanna know how to do that, check out the previous videos. Uh, we're basically going to pull this back out of our animate answer value and put it back inside of our render function like we had it a few videos ago. We're also going to change our two value from the row width to just a value of one. Let's go ahead and just close this so we don't see that error. Now if we go back down to our styles inside of here, we're no longer wanting to set the width based off of this dot animated width because it's only going to go up to one. We're just going to set this to row width. So at this point when I save it, we're going to have the correct width. It's just gonna show up without animating. Now we can actually use the animations. And like I said before, we can't modify the width, but we can modify transform. And we can get somewhat of a similar experience to what we had of modifying the width from zero to 100, for example, by using what's called scale X. So actually transform is going to take an array and each element within this array is going to be an object in which we can assign a property. And this time we're going to modifying scale X because it allows us to get a relatively similar experience to growing the width, just slightly different. If you toy around with it more, you can probably get it even more similar, but we're going to get pretty close. So what we can do is say this dot underscore animated width. And remember we're going from zero to one. And what we can do here is actually call this dot animated width dot interpolate. And basically this allows us to take an input range and our input range is gonna be from zero to one and actually decide what we want the output range to be in that. So that's nice because we could use animated width for multiple different things. We could use it for opacity, we can use it to transform or to translate things, all kinds of different stuff, all based off of this one animated property. But again, we're just using it for scale X. And basically what our output range is going to be is zero to one as well. So in this case, the interpolation wasn't necessary, but I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about it. So that's what we did here. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to have a width 
set all the time. That's going to be the final width. But initially, our scale is going to be, our scale x is going to be zero. And as that 1500 milliseconds or 1.5 seconds happens, then our animation is going to progressively grow over time. The bar is going to go to whatever its full width should be. So remember, I'll go ahead and pull up the performance monitor once again. You can see our JavaScript thread is at 60 frames per second right now, but when I choose an answer, our JavaScript thread is dropping, and it is dropping as that animation is happening, as we saw before, but our animation was very smooth. Let's go ahead and see it again. You can see even as our JavaScript thread is significantly slower, by using the use native driver true, which is native animations, which is making a majority of the work happen off of the JavaScript thread, we're able to have those very smooth animations, even though our JavaScript thread is blocked. Now, like I said, you may have to make some modifications to your animations, but to ensure that the user provide or gets a really nice experience, it may be something worth doing. And also by using scale X and some other transform properties using opacity, you can probably make it look a lot more like the width is growing over time like we had initially, but using it completely native animations. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this series. If you've got any questions, check out the code, which will be linked down below. Check out the previous videos or any of the other videos on the Handlebar Labs YouTube channel. If you want to dive deeper into React Native and learning more about it, check out any of my courses available at learn.handlebarlabs.com. You can cover you know, basics of React Native, which I've got a free course all the way up to production ready React Native, which is covering testing, deployment, management, all of the complex stuff that comes with running an actual React Native application in production. So if you're serious about React Native, be sure to check out those courses. And I hope you found this series valuable and helpful. And I'll talk to you guys on the next video.